I'm Jessica with that hashtag show. I'm here with Jack Wolf today to talk about the magic flute. Now, this is your first feature film role, but you do have a background in both music and theater, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> so what was <laughs> it like making this jump to film, in particular with a film that is so influenced by, you know, stage and theater anyway? Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, at the beginning completely intimidating I think that's part of just my character fabric anyway just as who I am sort of jumping in fear first and being very sort of acquainted with my nerves about it um because you know film sets are these huge like expansive places and um I just did so much learning on that film and I was very very lucky to have a, a cast full of people who were just willing to share so much knowledge I mean a cast full of brilliant brilliant actors so very very special to me um I think the irony that it is a film that's so like rooted in um theatre and in opera that's quite cool I always found that really really cool um but it's sort of it's important to, for me to note that um we shot it you know so soon you know during the sort of Covid pandemic where there was no access at all to live theatre to live music to live anything um so it was never lost on me that during this process because of that within the cast of this film um it's a collaboration between you know real opera stars and uh, theater predominantly theater actors and predominantly film actors all working together to create something that is a tribute to what is a live art form to opera like that was a really special thing for me yeah, what's it like getting to blend those different performance styles? Because you've got like the theatricality of the stage and the opera going on and those performances where you get to play in the fantasy world. And then you also, mm -hmm. your character comes back to the real world and has to have, you know, regular real life things happening as well. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, challenging. I think because what's what's wonderful about the Magic Flute is its sort of escapism. Is it that it's just, these, it's a huge story. It's like so many operas, it's, ex it's expansive, it's um it's made with sort of stock characters who teach lessons and all you know and the, and part of that with you know Shikineda's words especially um when we were shooting um they, they wanted to be quite uh they wanted to honor the word as much as possible the, the original sort of libretto of the opera as much as possible in the translation and it's heightened it's so heightened the characters are so heightened but Flo the director wanted Tim, who I play, to be grounded in a, some sort of reality, right? So um, going between what he wanted to be quite a realistic world with really, you know, terrible things happening, like that, and, and also the normal things that Tina just have to just deal with, and then jumping into something that is so heightened and so expansive, I think sort of becomes a, a metaphor uh, into why we escape into the arts. Do you know what I mean? Tim gets to, for a couple of hours, um, jump into some huge fantasy adventure in which he is the sort of main character and then go back and deal with his usual life. That's what we do when we watch theatre. That's what we do when we watch opera, when we watch films, when we watch nostalgic fantasy films. Like, that's what that's for. So it all feels like some big metaphor to me. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Absolutely. I totally get what you're saying. Cool. cool. Do you have a favorite song or a favorite scene from the movie? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think I just, I can't believe I get to exist in the same material that someone like Sabine Devalier, who plays the Queen of the Night, and Morris Robinson, who plays Sarastro. What they brought was so brilliant. They are the real deal in terms of that world. And when we were um, actually just sort of to go back on what I just said, we ha I had no access to, to live music and live theatre. It's something that matters a lot to me. When we were rehearsing in Munich in the film studios, um, we, we each began to go into the studio and pre-record our, our vocals for the opera world. And Sabine, um, who hadn't performed to an audience for a really long time um, because of COVID, invited us all in to listen to her um, record her arias for the Queen of the Night and, and I think she wanted the audience to respond to and we wanted to be there for that um, so hearing her record those two arias will, will be a really special moment for me forever me and Iwan just sat there like crying like quietly trying to make sure no one else could notice <laughs> yeah. 
Perfect, perfect. And now you have the Magic Flute releasing that's in theaters right now. Um, and then you also are doing sort of a back to back situation because you have Shadow and Bone coming out just a week after. I'm a big Grishaverse fan. I'm very excited. Oh, hooray. Oh, great. Um, as Wylan. So I'm excited for that. Um, but I noticed that you've got the Magic Flute and then Shadow and Bone. And you also did an episode of The Witcher. So I was uh, wondering if fantasy is like really uh, an important genre to you, if that's something you gravitate towards or if that was sort of coincidence that all of these things yeah, are that's such a good question I guess the honest answer as an actor I guess is that it, it sort of is coincidence how that works because I think especially at the beginning of a career you have such little choice over what you get access to right so I was just very very lucky to have been allowed into the room tradition for Magic Flute by uh, Sophie Holland and Faye Tindy um, who cast the Magic Flute and also cast um, Shadow Bone and I had a predominantly theatre background and I think they saw something that would have been right for Tim um, and something that would have been right for Wylan and um, really gave me that opportunity. Um, for me, what's great is that I love fantasy. I, you know, I grew up with that. My favourite film of all time growing up was we had a VHS of The NeverEnding Story in mm. my house where I grew up in. And that was like my sixth day film, like under the blanket sort of yeah. makes me feel better. Um, so also fun fact, in Munich, where we were shooting um, the uh, magical world in the Bavaria film studios in Munich, we were shooting on like the same lot as The NeverEnding Story from the oh, 80s. Really? which was huge for me. And I was like constantly pinching myself that that was true. Anyway, that for me, that was like a big nerd moment. So That's I was right. very happy. And full circle too. <laughs> so full circle, totally. And I got to meet Valcourt the Luck Dragon, which is great. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> okay, I want to close out with just some quick rapid fire questions to help the okay. to know you better. So gut instinct, don't overthink it, ready? Uh, okay. <laughs> What's the last movie you saw in theaters? Uh... Um, uh, in theaters, I actually think it was The Woman King. Good choice, good choice. What was the last show that you binged? Next in Fashion Season 2. <laughs> <laughs> What's the last book that you recommended to someone else? Uh, Cricket Kingdom. Perfect, perfect. What is your dream stage role? <sighs> um, Puck, Midsummer Night's Dream. Go to karaoke song. Uh, that has changed very recently. It used to be, uh, I used to like try and grab someone to duet I Know Him So Well from Chesswood, but now it's uh, Bon Jovi, Bed of Roses. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you order when you go to a bar? Um, boring most of the time, Diet Coke, but if I'm being really cool, um, like an old fashioned kit and Freddie both like those. So I try to be cool and all about with them. Sure. That's my go-to too. Also when I'm trying to make people think that I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, best pizza topping. Anything barbecue, like barbecue sauce, barbecue chicken, that sort of stuff. And an actor you'd like to work with next. Tony Collette. Good choice. Good choice. And finally, why should everybody check out the magic flute? Oh, um, for anyone who misses like big nostalgic fantasy films from the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, who also care about escapism for a while, um, what I really, really want to happen, I know this isn't a very rapid answer, but I, it's important to me, why, what I really, really would love to happen is that people watch the film and then are inspired to go and watch the opera live or any opera live or any live theatre at all. That's a genre. That's a, that's a sort of um, a place in the industry that need, needs support. And I would, I just hope that, that it's able to help that. Absolutely. I think it's a great entry point for people who haven't quite worked their way up to seeing like an opera in a theatre that they can start here with this film and make it oh, you know, I hope so. more accessible. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Well, that's my time. Thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much.